How does organizational change happen? Part one. Managers at every level have the opportunity to create and sustain change in their organizations. Despite high failure rates, leading change is possible if you follow a basic set of evidence-based principles and develop the other skills you've learned about in this course. Let's take a look at how organizational change happens by reviewing five change management models. One of the most referenced models of change is Lewin's model. The first stage of change is unfreezing, in which we assess the organization's readiness for change and we prepare in advance of the actual change. By understanding the context, we increase our chances of a successful change. The second stage is changing, in which the change is implemented and the situation is monitored. The third stage is refreezing, in which the change is complete and measures are put in place to make sure it sticks. This model is useful in highlighting the importance of preparing for change and then taking steps to sustain it after it's been implemented. The other defining feature of Lewin's model is the concept of force field analysis. Driving forces motivate and encourage change while resisting forces prevent it and create pushback. An example of a driving force could be a large group of committed top-level managers or change initiatives that were developed by employees themselves. To evaluate these forces, ask questions like, what is preventing this from happening? And how might we speed up this change? We can then accelerate the change by strengthening driving forces and weakening resisting forces. We can learn another important lesson about change from the punctuated equilibrium theory in biology. Change management experts suggest organizations experience periods of stability that are punctuated or interrupted by periods of change. Managers need to recognize whether their organizations are currently experiencing stability or change before initiating their own changes. Too many changes at once or too much change over time can make it difficult for some people to do their jobs. Bridges' model highlights the need for managers to recognize the psychological transition that accompanies change. At first, people may experience a series of negative emotions before finally coming to terms with the change. Give people a chance to voice their opinions ahead of the change and then check in with them as the change is implemented to help them work through these emotions. 